Hello my dear and faithful YouTube watchers. Uh, today I'd like to present a very special tutorial about a topic I read about a lot in the internet and I also noticed there is a lot of confusion about this topic and what I mean is uh, stereo processing. Um, in this tutorial I'd like to show you, also with practical examples, some uh, methods how to perform steer processing and I'd like to outline the basic principles of steer processing. Okay, what is stereo anyway? Uh, in short, it's uh, what happens uh, between your ears if your left and your right here um, hear different sounds then you hear stereo. So stereo is, is a kind of perception which takes place in the brain. Okay, when does stereo happen? Um, maybe we should first start with mono. What is mono? You get a mono perception if uh, the signal uh, which, you, which arrives at your left ear is exactly the same as the signal which arrives at your right ear. If the brain perceives uh, two identical signals, then your brain thinks, okay, that's mono and you perceive the sound in the dead center. And if this sound wanders to the left, then your left ear will get um, a higher volume and your right ear will get a lower volume and then your brain uh, inter interprets uh, this perception as panning to the left and panning to the right. Um, the next concept that I'd like to talk about is how do we get stereophonic perception anyway in the sense of uh, spatial perception. Spatial perception is something uh, that is always happening with you because everything we hear with our two, uh, two ears is spatial perception and this spatial uh, perception is um, processed by the brain and it interprets the signals arriving at your ears in very special ways. So the, the first interpretation is the loudness difference um, between your ears. As I just explained, this will be uh, interpreted by the brain as panning. But there is more. Um, if you hear a sound source which is coming from the left or from the right, you not only have a volume difference, there is also a spatial, no, sorry, um, a time delay because the signal which is coming from the left um, takes a shorter period of time to arrive at the left ear than to arrive at the right ear. So the signal perce uh, perceived by the right ear is a tidbit later than the signal that arrives at your left ear. And this is also interpreted by the brain and um, gives the, the brain uh, an additional spatial uh, information and enables the brain to locate and to triangulate the sound source. The brain is also able to interpreted the reflections of the room. So um, if something, uh, an audio event, a signal happens in the room like clapping with your hands or whatever you like, then your brain, your ears hear the room information or the reflections from the um, wardrobes and walls and carpet and floor and whatever is around you are interpreted by the brain and give the brain an, like a sonar 
and information about the um, way the room is built. And this is for example a way to, to place an instrument into a virtual room using a, a stereo uh, reverb for example and give it by this artificial processing um, all the reflections which are interpreted by the brain as space. That's basically stereophonic perception, but there is more. Um, stereophonic uh, perception is also something which happens around you. So um, you can, for example, listen to songs where you think you're, you're just uh, surrounded by, by a cloud of sound. And this cloud of sound uh, surrounding you is used with very intricate stereo processing and I'd like to explain later how this works. And now I come to the matter of correlation. Correlation is a mathematical measure uh, where you can measure the uh, similarity equals to correlation of two signals. And if these two signals are completely identical, they are completely correlated and the correlation factor is 1. And then you perceive mono. If the signals differ a bit, you get the impression of stereo. So the more the signals differ, the more the correlation drops and the more is your stereo perception. So if your correlation finally drops to zero, then you, ha you have similar signals, but there is no uh, correlation between them, meaning that the left and the right source is running completely uh, different. Even if the, uh, even if the tones uh, um, are sounding um, similar. Um, Okay, what's happening now if the correlation drops below zero? Um, you might have heard that uh, correlation uh, below zero is bad. Uh, I'd like to explain you why this is so. Um, as soon as the correlation drops to zero, your signals are becoming more identical, but inverted. Meaning, uh, if the left signal goes like this, above zero, and the right signal goes like this, below zero, then the waveform is basically the same, but only the sign is inverted. And if the uh, correlation drops to minus one, then both signals are identical, only the sign is inverted. And if you listen to signals with um, inverted sign, it's um, also sometimes called phase inverse, but it's wrong. It's not a phase inversion, it's just an inversion of the sign. So every wave going to the positive on the left side is identically going to the negative on the right side. And the stereo impression is uh, sounds uh, very wide and and trancy, very impressive and you think wow that's the stereo I would like to hear but the problem is if you add these two signals to mono then the signal will completely vanish so you shouldn't do this um, before we dive in and I will go more technical um, I'd like to um, address um, the last matter, talking about um, stereo processing means in the first place um, creating um, sp spatial perception for the listener as if the listener is listening to an orchestra spreaded in the space. 
um, this is dif difficult enough, but um, often we are not content with this. We want more. More means larger than life. And this is what is so fascinating about uh, digital signal processing. Then you can make the signals appear larger than life. And later in the practical examples, I will also show you how to make signals larger than life. Okay, uh, so much for the introduction. Uh, now let's dive in. I hope I can keep you interested. Um, I prepared a short showcase um, track where I'm going to show you which techniques can be used. Okay, let's start with a pretty easy one. Um, I recorded a German spiritual th song and it consists of two mono tracks, a vocal track and a guitar track. And I made these, this track um, stereo using very, very basic methods. I'm going to show this now. Okay, let's start with the tracks. They're both mono. The first is the vocal track. And the guitar track. Let's have a look at a very important tool um, which shows you the um, amount of stereo signal you've got in your track. It's a so-called goniometer. I'm not going to explain this uh, goniometer. You can read it in Wikipedia or wherever you like. Uh, important is, as long as your track is mono, you will always see lines. <coughs> and if you sorry, if you pan the signal, the lines will tilt. I will show you this now for the vocal track. As you can see, mono. And if I pan this track now, it will tilt from left to right. Okay, as you can see, uh, the tilt of the goniometer tells you in which direction your signal goes. And because um, mono um, contains no stereo spread, this will always be a line. The same with the guitar signal. Another very important information. This is uh, the so called correlation meter. And the correlation meter also tells you how mono your signal is. So if the signal is 100% um, mono, the correlation will be plus one. If it is stereo, it will be somewhat between a plus one and minus one. And if your signal is completely out of phase, that is if the uh, the left and the right channel are switched uh, to a uh, uh, different polarity. So if the right channel has an inverse polarity to the left channel, then it's uh, minus one. And this is something we do not want. If the 
correlation goes into this area, then you have got phase problems. Okay, let's stop for example the guitar. So, now we have got two, two indicators, the goniometer showing a line and the correlation meter showing plus one. So we have got perfect mono. So if we tilt the signal now, uh, sorry, if we pan the signal, this will tilt, but the goniometer will stay the same. As you can see here. Okay. Now, what can we do in order to get these two tracks to stereo? Very easy, we pan it. And that was exactly what I was doing when I was producing uh, this piece. So, now the voice goes to the left, this uh, guitar goes to the right, and we have got stereo. <laughs> You can see it here, now the correlation is between zero and plus one in the green area, meaning that uh, the face of the uh, track is okay. And as you can see here, now you don't have a line, but the signal is distributed between left and right. Okay. Now to make the whole thing even more impressive and more stereo, I'm simply, simply using a um, stereo reverb through the sense and then we will get even more stereo. As you can see here now, the uh, goniometer shows an even wider distribution, meaning that your signal is even more stereo now. And uh, the uh, correlation meter now shows a lower value. Now, uh, this stereo channel 2 is very helpful because it can also show you the mono and the side part of the signal, meaning the mono and the stereo part. So we can listen to it in mono just to check if the uh, mono is uh, still okay, uh, meaning that you don't have any phase problems. Now the sideband and stereo part is muted, you've got mono, as you can see here. And this is, now we can, we can hear the sideband meaning we can hear what is stereo. Now it's interesting, what you can see here now, if, a sig uh, if you only uh, hear the sideband, the stereo part, you also get a line uh, between plus and minus S. And if you listen to the mono part, you get this line. And if you've got stereo, the uh, signal in the goniometer is wobbling between these two lines. Okay, now let's check the reverb. The check shows that the uh, stereo reverb is also mono com compatible, so you haven't got any phasing problems because your uh, correlation meter shows you are in the green area, and if we mute. Sorry, if you switch the signal to mono now, you can still hear everything. All right. Okay, so far now uh, what I did with the piece, but I'm going to show you some more techniques I didn't apply on this uh, special track, but they could have been applied. So I prepared now uh, 
some effects you could use in order to make uh, either a monotrack stereo or to widen, widen a track which is already stereo. Okay, the first hack or trick, call it what you like, is um, double tracking. So this is th the, I would say, the most uh, natural uh, stereo, stereo processing um, method you could use, meaning that you um, the c record the track twice and put the one recording to the left side and the other recording to the right side. And since I only had one recording of the guitar, I used another trick because the um, this piece has similar parts. I just uh, cut out uh, two um, uh, choruses and put them uh, on the left and the right side. It's shown here. So this is one part. I think this is this part. And this part was was constructed using parts from behind there. I had to adapt it a bit because th this um, piece wasn't played with a click track. And now we hear the same harmonies of the guitar playing the same uh, chords but in a different, in a slightly different wa way. And if you pan it to left and right, you will get a stereo effect sounding like this. Now let's have a look uh, at our tools. So as you see, you get a wide stereo distribution. And here is also a correlation meter. And as you can see here, now the signal wobbles a bit around zero, is going into the negative area, which is showing you a phasing problems. So if you switch the signal to mono, you might get a problem. Let's listen to this once again. Okay, now let's listen to the signal in mono, just to check if we have got a phasing problem here. Okay, it's mono now. I would say it's still okay, because the volume doesn't drop too much. But now you can hear a kind of chorus effect. And what you can hear are phase problems uh, caused by uh, the so-called COM filter effect, meaning that um, partial frequencies are deleted by combining the left and right side. But in this case, I would say it's okay. Now the stereo part. Okay, this is double tracking. Now from, for the next method. It's the Haas method. And the effect you uh, can achieve is the so-called Haas effect. Without further comment, let's listen to it. Okay, it's definitely stereo. How is it made? You use a stereo delay. And you add um, time shift between the uh, left and the right channel left and right to the opposite directions and now you, you have to adjust a value which sounds okay for the right side where the uh, left side of the signal is delayed between to achieve the harsh effect between I would say uh, 15 and uh, 30 milliseconds and in this case I chose 25 in order to showcase uh, this effect. Now I'm going to play around a bit with the delay and you will hear the differences. Ok, 
okay, this is way too much. Now there is no delay, it's mono again. Now let's crank it, let's crank it up a bit. That's what I wanted. So, okay, mono now. Now, step by step. It's already stereo. As you can hear, the more I increase the delay, the wider the effect gets. Oh, no, that's too much again. Okay, so far so good, but you have to be careful and listen to the uh, mono part of the signal because the harsh effect, um, as the left and the right signal are essentially the same, only um, shifted in time, you get uh, phase cancellations and you have to adjust this delay value in order to minimize these phase cancellation effects and still to get a good mono sound. Okay, now let's watch this here and let's listen to the signal. I'm muting now. Oh, sorry. No, now it's mono. Now let's play with this. Okay. Do you hear the phase cancellations? At cer certain tones of the guitar, the uh, the uh, signal really sounds weird. I would say. Oh, this is really bad. but I'm still hearing problems. Oh, that's not good. Okay, that sounds okay for me. Um, this is exactly the value I adjusted. Okay. Important for the harsh effect, um, in order to get the right adjustment, you have to do it in mono in order to check uh, phase cancellation problems. Okay, so far for the harsh effect. Now the next one. Differential pitch. Um, this is a completely different trick and it's based uh, upon the idea that you do a pitch shift between the left and the right signal. So in um, contradiction to the house effect where I do a time shift, now you do a pitch shift. Okay, let's listen to this. Alright, nice stereo again. Let's check with our tools. Nice stereo distribution. Correlation is around zero, so it visually looks okay. Oh, by the way, I used this tool. And as you can see, it's a pitch shift with about 2%. Okay, here again we check the mono compatibility. With the stereo channel again. What you can hear now is a very strong uh, chorus effect. 
it's a more pleasing than uh, in the house effect but also here you have to decide if this is okay for you or if it isn't the stereo part all right so far for the pitch shift trick now the next one It's the modulated, modulated pitch shift. Let's see what I did here. I used a um, pitch modulation plugin, in this case M Vibrator from Melter Productions. And sorry. And I applied um, a random modulation of the pitch, uh, which is different for the left and for the right side. So you have got two effects combined. Uh, first, the uh, left and right differ in pitch, and also the, the um, modulation of the pitch is different for the left and for the right side. So that's basically the trick. So could call it an enhancement of the pitch model uh, of the pitch effect it's the modulated pitch effect okay enough talk let's listen to the results left side right side checking with the tools again nice dairy width now this is interesting now, uh, by using a, a random modulation of the left and the right side you can suppress uh, phase cancellation effects. So if you look at the goniometer you will see that now it is in the, in the green area. And this is an indicator that if you switch it to, m to mono you uh, should hear a less negative effects of this processing. Very well correlation. Now oh, mono, sorry. Okay. Still sounding a bit phasey, a bit like chorus. So it's now your own decision if you prefer uh, the modulated pitch effect or the uh, pure pitch effect. Okay, modulated pitch done. Next one. Now we um, switch to a different kind of stereo processing. Uh, it's ambience. Um, this effect is applied as, a, as an insert and it um, adds an uh, artificial stereo room, stereo room to the signal. So basically the signal stays money but the reflections from the room are stereo and then of course the uh, combined signal is becoming stereo. Uh, if you, because we are um, applying this effect as an insert, it's very important that you drag this mono track to a, a stereo track um, because otherwise the room will always sti stay in mono so you have to watch this yeah let's listen i used valhalla room because it's a very good room simulator and first without processing Now with the room. Et voila! It's stereophonic, but in a completely other way um, in comparison to the house effect or to the uh, pitch effect. Correlation looks good. Let's check mono. Fine.
So this is important to remember. Um, if you apply a good room effect, then your mono signal uh, won't sound uh, chorusy or facey, as opposed to uh, the harsh effect and the pitch effect. So this is a, a very good method in order to to, to get a spatial stereo signal and to avoid uh, these uh, side effects. Okay, this is the stereo room trick. The next one is differential EQing. Now this method is um, it's a bit related to the Haas effect and the pitch effect because it, it, it also uh, is, is based on the idea to process the left and the right channel in different ways. Um, but in this case uh, we do not process uh, the pitch or the time. Uh, we process the uh, spectral content of the signal. And as you can see here, I applied uh, different uh, EQ curves to the left and to the right channel. And the uh, idea behind this processing was the following. Uh, you could uh, regard the guitar as um, two instruments or two sound sources, uh, meaning the body and the neck. And in the right part, I um, enhanced the sound of the neck, which represents the, the uh, high frequencies, and on the left side, uh, which is shown in red, I try to enhance the body. So this, that's the basic idea, uh, because uh, this effect is a bit weak, I enhance it a bit using stereo widening. It's a uh, MS editor, and I cranked the side gang a bit up in order to uh, make this effect more obvious. Okay, now let's listen to it. This effect is quite subtle, but it's definitely there. Now let's check with the tools. Stereophonic. Correlation looks okay. Mono check. Oh sorry. Now oh it's mono. It's working great. So this is a, a great method in order to uh, achieve uh, stereo without the phasing problems, but as you heard the effect is quite subtle and it's not so blatant as the other effects. <laughs> 